everybody got your popcorn, got your drink, your beverage of choice, because it is time for the Witches Movie Coven. Yay! We haven't decided we were doing the jazz hands or what yet. <laughs> <laughs> Where witches talk about movies and witchy witch movies. Um, my name is Patty Nakery. I am one of your hosts. Thank you guys for coming. Um, tell your friends you're live. We want you to join in our chat right here because this is live. Um, let me introduce my co-host. I guess we will start with our birthday boy, Jason. So happy birthday, Jason Mankey. Yay. Thank you. Uh, it's been quite the day here in Northern California where we're all getting ready to be swept away. Yeah. I'm just like, I think it's all good. It's good to be with you all tonight on my birthday. I love our little group. And I love all the people in the chat too. Uh, it's yeah. just this has just been so much fun the last couple of months. This has. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Salem. And our other co-host, Heather. Heather, the movie Heather Green, who wrote the movie on witches in movies. So there you go. Light camera witchcraft. Um, we have going, working down, working down, working down. We have Richard Lael Lillard, the gentleman psychic, right here, right there. And hello. Then, hello, hello. And next to him, Courtney Buckley. Yes, ghost bait herself. That's me. <laughs> That's her. And of course, we all have Black Phillip. Have you guys ordered your merch yet? Your Black Phillip t shirt, your Black Phillip hoodie, your Black Phillip itself? Ah, your, your Roku. Because it's the time. I think it's cold everywhere. It's cold in California. I got to get me my blanket, my Witch's Movie Coven blanket. But Mine just shipped. I'm very excited. Oh, good. I ordered it a while ago, but now it's back. Yeah. You can't rush these things. Good things come no, to those no. who win. Hi, Mary Jane. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Banshee. Hi. You guys are great. Hi, Alicia. Um, okay. Well, we talk about all things movies, and Jason had the first choice tonight. So, because it is his birthday, and this whole show is about Jason's birthday. So, just keep oh, saying God. Hi, <laughs> What movie are we talking about today, Jason? So uh, we're talking about The Green Knight is our is our uh, first movie that we're talking about. I was introduced to, to Sir Gowan in The Green Knight, which is one of the oldest Arthurian myths that we have. Uh -oh. In the 10th grade, and I've been in fact, it had gotten put on hold, pandemic. And it was the first movie I saw in the theaters other than Spider-Man. Because you can't miss Spider-Man. Um, I think... No, maybe Spider-Man was after. Whatever. It was one of the first movies I saw uh, after the pandemic. And it's just this really weird-ass movie. It's pretty loyal to the actual poem. And it has, uh, like, a heavy dose of witch in it. It's very much a witch movie, uh, for those of you who got to see it. And it's also this really ambiguous movie... We're, we're losing <laughs> a lot of people think it has a fascinating weird ass film and I, it's hypnotic it's just hypnotic it certainly is and it's very witchy because i mean in the opening scenes the medallions everything they're wearing that's why i wore my biggest earrings it's like, <laughs> look like the movie um so why did you pick this movie just because it's a weird ass fabulous movie for your birthday because it's new because it's I didn't think that the rest of you had ever seen it. And so, uh, so I thought if I got to pick it, like this would be the only way like that we would watch it <laughs> is if I got to choose the movie. And I mean, it does open with a witch. Sir Gowan's mom is a witch and she casts the spell that brings the green knight in because she's trying to get her silly son to grow up. So Come back. You know, come like back. there's a witch in the Celtic myth, like Celtic myth, and you know Arthurian legend, and it kind of plays into how a lot of us are <laughs> witchcraft. So it just it just seemed like the right thing to do. Good. Yeah, that beginning ritual was great with the circle and the bones and the skulls and the bearing. It was like, oh yeah, this is gonna and be good. crowns with the halos. I was in love. Yes. <laughs> and, and and the Green Knight looks like the Oak King or the Holly King, right? I mean, and that was a conscious decision by the filmmakers to make that sort of reference to the Oak King, Holly King myth. Uh, oftentimes, 
people like to say that Sir Gowan in the Green Knight, the original poem, references that myth, but the myth is actually a lot more recent than that. The myth itself sort of draws on old folklore, but it wasn't a myth that those people had, but they intentionally kind of put it into this movie and they gave it that kind of look, which I just think is so cool. It, it's great when witches and pagans are influencing Hollywood. And I think it really comes through in this film. Yes, I, I do. I, I, I have to admit, I have not finished it yet because it's not the fastest paced movie, which yeah. I don't mind. I, I don't mind slow paced movie. What my normal 3 a.m. movie watching after a, like a 20 hour day, I was like, I can't keep awake. I can't keep awake, you know, under my tent cover. So I was trying to watch it between clients and work today. Uh, so I haven't finished it, but I, I don't mind spoilers because I watch it anyway. <laughs> but I'm 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 engrossed in it. I'm engrossed in it. But um, Heather, you are our movie expert, the book expert, but you are not engrossed in it, correct? You are going to be our naysayer today. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't believe Jason's going to have a, have a, he might storm out, it looks like. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a beautifully shot movie. I think there's some really nice things in it, but, um, and I didn't dislike it. I think there's a lot of interesting, interesting things to talk about, but, um, I, I just, it, for an enjoyment level, I didn't enjoy it. I think I had, I had some, some complaints, uh, that I would have wanted to see, um, I would have wanted them to see to see a more direct and obvious connection marker for the Arth that is uh, that that was Arthur and um, and and that connection because I don't think unless you knew the story or what the story was or how it was connected that a person going in would actually know that that was King Arthur right there and that the mother was actually a, a, a supposed to be a Morgan Le Fay type character. Um, I don't think a person would have put those that those pieces together, which I think makes the film more interesting when you know that. I think it's invariably uh, a more um, has a lot more depth to it when you know that it has a connection to that. Not it didn't have to be obvious, just a little bit more to make that connection. That bothered me, and and um, I I just. You know, it was like, it was ho-hum for me. I think it was beautiful. And I, I think there was a couple interesting pieces. And one of the things I wanted to bring up with regard to an interesting piece, and you may have noticed this, is that uh, when he's in the castle um, at, towards the end and she paints the picture of him and hangs it upside down, that's a tarot card. That That is the hanged man. And he is stuck in that place and not moving and not progressing on his process. Uh, on his journey at that point. And I said, oh my goodness, look at, we have the image of the hangman. And I would like to go back and watch the film again. I made the connection between the Holly and Oak King. I would like to go back and watch the film slowly and watch for other esoteric and occult imagery that was uh, subtly placed within the story. That is more interesting to me than the film as a whole as entertainment. I will say, Heather, I did see one of the occult, you know, Patty brought up the the the, the star, the pentagram, mm -hmm. but what I thought was really brilliant was when he beheads the Green Knight mm -hmm. and the, the camera is above, now the pentagram is inverted. I thought that was quite brilliant too. I think they're throughout. I, th I think they're subtle. And I think you have the obvious one you, with the pentacles and, and that are all over. You have that as an obvious thing. But then you have like, you know, he's holding a holly branch when he walks in and he looks like the Oak King. And that immediately, from my mind, triggered Oak and Holly King, like like Jason said. And then you have the inverted pentacle. You have the obvious uh, hangman imagery. Mm -hmm. So I think there's these subtle occult yeah. things that play out throughout. And I think that's the most interesting part of the movie. So I have to pop in and um, Heather, as I love you and I respect you. I did not know the story <laughs> beforehand. I didn't know the story and I got it. Like I Ooh. got, I, I got what was happening. Okay. I got who that was. It took me a minute. It, at first I was, I, I know roughly like the story of King Arthur. Um, but I knew, I guess I knew maybe enough, but like I was able to, you know, when I, when I first saw them, I think it was, um, when he was handing, when he handed him the sword and everyone was like, Oh, he's giving you his sword. Like, okay, that's, because they had mentioned in the beginning the sword out of the stone, so it's this Excalibur. Um, you know, and then that was like, oh, okay, I, I think that's when I started to figure it out. I didn't know the background story at all. Like, I had never read the poem that it was based off of or anything like that. Um, 
But I, I think that that's the beauty of A24 movies for me. Uh, and I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This studio does amazing, amazing, amazing work. But it's those subtle subtleties that they put into the movies that make them amazing. Like the, the cinematography is incredible. The sound is incredible. The, the um, you know, not just the, the scenery, but like the way that they pipe in like, you know, background sound not even just the music sorry but the way that they pump in the background sounds i think i i loved it for that because i i haven't met an a24 movie that i haven't loved yet it wasn't (laughs) even the weirdest one i've seen even though it was really weird um but for me it was like i was engrossed in all of the things and i was engrossed in the story and i feel like i missed a lot of the the subtleties which is why i think it is a great movie i think for a rewatch because I'd like to go back now that I'm not like hooked on the story and waiting to see what happens and, and look for all those things. I did see, like Richard Lill said that in the inverted pentagram, I missed the hanged man. Um, but there was all those little pieces that I was picking up as we were going. Cause I was thinking of it in terms of talking about it for tonight. So I was looking for some of it, but I did miss other things, but I think it was, I thought it was really well done. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, so for anybody goes, what is an A24 movie? Because you jump into that. Tell me anybody who might not oh, know. Oh, so A24 is the pr- production studio, I think. But they, so they've done movies like Hereditary and Midsummer. Um, the Lighthouse is probably the weirdest one I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, that is weird. But they're, <laughs> yeah. That was um, a really but- weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, anything that they put their hands on that I've seen, and I'm like, I have to thank you, Jason, because I didn't even know that this movie existed, nor that it was an A24 movie. So I, that flew entirely under my radar and I, I love their movies. So as soon as I looked it up and I saw that that's who had done it, I was like frothing at the mouth to watch it. It almost feels more like a little art house movie than anything else. I mean, it's so wondrously weird and it is, it is slow and plotting but it's a sumptuous slow and plotting. There's so much to look at on the screen. There aren't a lot of characters, but while you're watching it, you're trying to like put all the characters together because they kind of overlap in several ways. Like one actress will play a couple of different people. It's, it's just a fascinating little puzzle box and you can interpret it in various ways when you're done watching it. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, he's a failure or maybe this did work out. And I loved that comment about how Sir Gawain is like like one foot in this world and one in the world of the dead. Like mm-hmm. he's already dead in parts of the movie. <laughs> it's just fantastic. And uh, Dev Patel, who's the actor in it, is just he does such a great job. He does mm-hmm. just he just just embodies this character, and you can see all of his flaws. And he is he's a really flawed character in a lot of ways. He's not even likable. Uh, which I like movies with unlikable characters. Yeah, yeah. I have to say one of my. F- oh, sorry. Go on. Go on. That's oh, it. Oh, I was just gonna say my my favorite line from the movie was when um, he went into that house and was it Winifred, and um, he like reached. He thought she was a ghost, so he reached out to touch her face, and she was like, "Don't touch me. You're a knight. You should know that. You should know better." <laughs> like, I just was. I like screamed out loud because it was just like. I was so engrossed in like the darkness of it. And then she said that and I was like, that was funny. I'm oh like, like, yes, go queen. But I, I like that one. My favorite part was the marionettes. <laughs> <laughs> A little punch and Judy almost. Yeah, I was exactly oh, punching Judy. I watched that Richard Lamb. Yeah. I thought, oh, marionettes like Richard Lamb. But I <laughs> fellas over I- here. I just assumed Richard Lale would like this movie because it's sort of a sad Christmas movie. It was great. It was. I, I actually I enjoyed the fact that it took place on Xmas. I thought it was brilliant. In the poem, it takes place New Year's Day, um, which is a subtle thing. But as a fan of the original source material, that did make me a little bit sad. Like, if you can't be true to a 14th century poem, what can you be true to? <laughs> <laughs> from what i understand there's a lot of things that they they 
they weren't true to. But, um, yes. you know, I, I don't think I don't think when you're adapting anything, whether it's 14th century or whether, you know, you, you have to make it so it's a film. So it works as a film. So people are going to want to sit in the theater. And so that 21st century people are going to want to watch the story. So you have to change things up. Uh, and and capture the spirit more than anything. And I, I don't know, because I don't know the poem. I am not a scholar of uh, Arthurian legends, although I have some good friends that are. Um, and I, um, you know, I, I enjoyed it to a degree. It's not one of those that I'm going to be cheering for like I do some other films. So, but it is, it's, it's beautiful in its own weird kind of way. And that's what I, if I go back, I want, I would, I would go, I, I'm more interested in it as a film historian and a film scholar than I am just for entertainment. And mm -hmm. I think going back and looking at the text and looking at the, the imagery alone and finding those occult things would be really fascinating. I almost wanted to do that, but I couldn't, uh, you know, it, wait a minute. Is there any other tarot cards purposely placed within here? Are there, you know, you have the crowns, the circle crowns. I mean, there's, there's things that are there. I know they're there and it's when spotting them the Easter forest, eggs, so to speak. What when was he's that? in the forest, he also, he has the face of death. So mm -hmm. there's the death card. So I would assume maybe yep. that would be another tarot reference. Yep. I'm thinking there's more then and as soon as I saw that one imagery, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we're talking about there's some depth to this that needs to be more investigated. It's not just another retelling of that yeah. Sir Gowan story. This there's a lot of little things. And that's what you expect from this type of um this these producers and this director and this this thing. That's who you because that's what the other films, like Courtney said, they're weird and they have this strange depth to them that sometimes you get and sometimes you don't <laughs> i think that's the beauty of them honestly like that's how all of the films for me have been there's those subtleties that they they just put into everything that you is up for interpretation however you want to interpret it and mm -hmm. I, I agree it was slow but i think being as big of a fan of those that those string of movies as, that as i am that slowness to me doesn't feel like it didn't feel like I was going to fall asleep. It felt like it was, it was feeding into the anxiety and the, the, you know, anticipation of the rest of the movie. So it was mm -hmm. like, even though it was rushing through the year, you know, we didn't watch him go through that whole year. It was still like, I can feel it in my body already, just like stretching it out and like holding my breath and waiting for the next thing to happen. And Oh my God, what is going to happen? And, you know, thinking, Oh, this, this went this way. Like when he was, um, when they, the, he was robbed and he was tied up on the ground. I fully, and it showed him with the, the death face. I was fully like, oh, he died right there. And the rest of the movie is going to be, you know, just his, his afterlife or whatever. But like, that's what I look for in those ways. Like I try to find those little plot twists. So that's what I was focused on the whole time was mm -hmm. finding, finding those, those things. So I just, I don't know. I think I liked how slow it was because I feel mm -hmm. like it built it up better. I, I want to be clear is that it's not the pace of the movie that bothered me at all like that I, I not at all I a slow movie is not a problem if it if it's gripping the story's there and the imagery's great you can sink into the imagery in the moments it's taking to to move to another shot I mean if the imagery is good so that is was not my I just you know entertainment wise I just was like okay I see what this is doing but again I think there's there's Easter eggs in there that are really fascinating that give this mm make you want to have a second look at it from that perspective so yeah it wasn't the pace that that was my problem i don't need no. a fast-paced you know rambo no. film to be entertained <laughs> matthew dear matthew in salem he made a really good point that the slowness is like a mill working how you were even a mill working is one of my favorite practices to do where you're building and you're building and you're building of the energy but thank you matthew because that's it it, the slow pace, it was a build, wow, Courtney said, but to take it into the witchcraft, it was very much like a mill working. I like that. Now, our producer, Rob, just put up here, is the way Arthur holds his hands, which he did that very handy thing. Is that possibly a card or how a king stands in one of the um, well, when he, I don't when know. He holds his hands. I, I didn't know if it was a card, but I think King Arthur in this movie sort of represents, as he gets older, the decaying of his kingdom and Camelot because it feels like 
this is a, a kingdom that has peaked already and everything mm -hmm. is sort of coming down and on the down low. And as Arthur and Guinevere age, everything ages with them and mm -hmm. it sort of breaks down and they're sort of representative of that. I might, you know, it's one of those things, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it reminded me of sort of like that idea of the divine king or something, you know, you have to die every once in a while mm -hmm. for the kingdom to thrive, right? The, your leader has to be ritually killed, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> so delightful, so charming, so mm -hmm. chilling. Yeah. <laughs> so rich really killed, and I, yes. I'm not a scholar. I'm going way back onto the chat room. Um, I'm not a scholar of the poem or knowing the poem or anything like that. But Mary Jane, our friend Mary Jane King, said that the poem is true at carrying the holly and looking like the holly mm -hmm. king. So that's within the poem as well. So the you know one thing I, is yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know what I hate. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> a lovely no, director. The direct no, I because I'm like designing new postcards now with our producer, Rob, the, the, the movie cover, the poster did not represent the film at all to me. It looked like I'm going to wait for like Batman or Superman. Yeah. Or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, that is so not what the film represents to me. Mm -hmm. the, the pictures, the colors, it's like, what? Yeah. I would Very never different. That film. Thank you, Jason. I love that. I would never uh, like scrolling through Showtime. I'd, I, I'm apparently very weird. I mean, I knew this film was on my radar for a year before it came out. I remember looking at the first trailers and going, oh my gods, I cannot wait. You know, and look, <laughs> you know, there. Oh. There are people who were in line to, you know, different things for different people. It's all good. It, it, the interesting thing about um, this film, um, just overall in, in my study, is that it's very rare that a Arthurian film made it into my discussions in American films, because it isn't, uh, you would think it would be something that, that's really popular in American films in terms of witches, because obviously they're, I didn't study ones that were not witches, um, but it wasn't. And one of the things that's interesting is when I went to sort of try to pull some of those movies in, I was I chatted with um, John Matthews and who's an Arthurian scholar and another friend of mine, Virginia Chandler, and um, they were very adamant to tell me over and over that Morgan Le Fay is not a witch. Morgan Le Fay is a priestess. Morgan Le Fay is this. Morgan Le Fay is that. She is not a witch. She does not belong. They call her a sorceress at, in some places. So so aligning her with witchcraft, although she is in a lot of cases, they the scholars say she was not is not traditionally considered a witch so I, I find it really interesting because there are a lot of stories and I always associated her with witchcraft and I always considered her a witch but um, if you ask you know the scholars they're going to say no she was not a witch um, she's not but a this witch movie, she's, your wife. Yeah, she's not a witch <laughs> but the, um, they just made her look like I one love that movie. Right. but I mean and, if she's um, a phosphorus and she's, a, she's doing magic and magical she's doing person magic Logical person, potatoes, potatoes. What's a word? Yeah. But they yeah. no the potatoes, potatoes. When you're an Arthurian scholar, you have to you have to separate them out. Apparently, I always called her a witch too, Patty. I always said she's a witch, but she is a sorcerer. She's a priestess. She's all these things, but she is not a witch. So, like okay. I said, they just made her look like one. And in this yeah. movie, though, she is called a witch. Uh, they use the word in this movie. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting that you bring that up, Heather, because I'm trying to think of Arthurian movies. And there aren't as many as you would think for mm -hmm. something that's in the public domain. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they strip the magic out of it entirely, or really Merlin is the only figure with any magic whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it was really nice to see one of these movies with the magic like up front and really prominent. Yeah, and I would have always said that Morgan Le Fay is a witch. Like, <laughs> you know, use magic stuff. That's that's witch enough for me, I think. <laughs> okay, so She's everybody's so commenting. I love it, you guys. Thank you that we got we've got from Robert Hicks. Morgan Le Fay is technically a fairy, as her name is Le Fay. There you go. Morgan Le Fay is associated with the druids. Druids are witches, right? I mean, technically. 
Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'd love you guys keep giving us your opinions, whatever they be. Monty Python, anyone? <laughs> you know, I was. I think there say was a that, reference. You, this movie does remind me of Monty Python and the Holy Grail in some ways because you can see that they did not have a giant budget to shoot the film, and it shows up. I mean, there's the very limited cast. There's a very limited sets. And in places, it really did remind me of the Holy Grail, which is not a bad thing because that movie no. is great in its own way. No, it's great. And, you know, there are sort of witches in that movie. Too. Yeah. Sort of. I mean, at least and they we made know it look to, like one. Yeah, at least we know how to find out how, you know, what witches are. Thanks to Monty yeah. Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. She turned that one guy into a nude, I believe. He got better. Yeah, he got better. <laughs> I've got two people voting her as a fairy now. Oh. Haley, her Irish mythology, she's a fairy. So, fairy, witch, priestess, sorcerer. That's yeah. one of the great things about Arthurian myth, though, is that it's always been so adaptable and so mm -hmm. flexible, and you can write new stories with it. You can find different takes on it. I mean, that's what made the Miss of Avalon so powerful. I mean, you had the mm -hmm sort of the original story and then Mary Zimmer Bradley took it into an entirely different place and made it really resonate with modern witches and modern pagans. You know, I would growing up, I thought that was like one of the most important pagan books anyone could ever read. Right. And I, I read witches. it twice. Yeah. Yeah. I read it twice and it was really, it definitely was uh, influential and inspirational for me, uh, that particular book, I just gave it to my daughter actually to read it. And, uh, I think also one of the, one of the ones that I hear about a lot and also get asked a lot, would you, did you talk about this movie in your book is Excalibur, not a U.S. movie, which is what I always say, but there was a lot of magic in that movie and, uh, including Morgan Le Fay mm -hmm. and Merlin. And that one is overdone, dark. There's a lot of bad things you can say about that movie, but you just got it. There's just something about it. You got love. Um, and uh, a friend of mine and, uh, and I dressed up like uh, Merlin and Morgan Le Fay for Dragon Con a few years ago, and that was quite fun. <laughs> walked around, <laughs> walked around dressed up like them. So uh, th that's another one that's pretty popular. And then, of course, there's Sword in the Stone, the Disney version, um, which oh. came out in the '60s. Oh, Jason, just take a deep <laughs> breath right there. <laughs> and I love Disney. And Mad that movie, Madam Mim. <laughs> that, I love Disney films, and that movie should work on so many levels, and it just doesn't work very well. You know, I'm going to oh, tell you. Best. I'm going to tell you, Jason, I actually can't stand Disney, but I love <laughs> Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised by this? I mean, I really. Love, I, 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 loved, I loved Mad Madam Mim. She was my favorite. I loved, <laughs> I, loved, I loved all of it. I loved the sword and the stone. It was, it was, I, loved, I loved that version. I feel like I am Mad Madam Mim, so I feel like I take a direct offense to that statement, Jason. It's your birthday. Maybe I'll let it slide, but I don't know. Well, I, I hadn't pulled my now. contrarian card out yet tonight, so I had oh, to oh, now goodness. laying it down. I think, <laughs> I think even when I was eight or nine, though, I was such a serious Arthurian myth fan that I really wasn't ready for something that I, mm -hmm. oh. I felt kind of insulted my intelligence. Though I really wasn't ready for anything that you know, <laughs> just felt like it was playing down to me. And I did. I love the rescuers. Yeah, the rescuers are great. So I had a drive in theater. Uh, yeah. So I think that's why it disappointed me. I wanted something a little more like action adventure with the sword in the stone. And I and I didn't get that, right? What is not action adventure about turning into a fish and try and trying to escape being eaten by a, a bigger fish? Like that's was it in Mort to Arthur? No, it wasn't in Mort to Arthur. I was very serious as a young person. Very serious. Clearly, clearly. Good issues. Get your pretty uh, hair. You can get away. Very they serious. Get away with it. I forget the rules we made about Jason's show. We have to agree with them, or we don't oh, agree. I, yeah. We had rules. I don't remember what. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, there are no rules. Please don't agree just to agree. Heather's already blown that tonight, anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I'm purposely okay. disagreeing with everything Jason says, just for his birthday. I yeah. want to. I'm on board with that plan now, now that I know this about Jason. <laughs> Heather, I'm already married. I, I don't need more of that in my life. <laughs> I 
hope she's listening. <laughs> she, just, she, just, she just got home, so she might be, yes. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Jason. Hi, Mrs. Jason. I yeah. want to go back. I think we've probably, if anybody else has anything to say about this film, we've probably talked it out. Um, I don't, I, I want to get back to Amanda had said she watches our show to get movie recommendations. So I think we could go there that. next. But before we go there, do we want to do an early ones up, ones down on the Green Knight? Okay. Yes. Now, everybody out there on our chat room, wherever your chat room are, you tell us ones up or ones down. So um, the Green Knight, ones up, ones down. Up. Up. Oh, Richard Lale, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, and we don't see anybody voting yet in the room. Wait, wait are they voting? Disney version, I'm starting to recall. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else is voting, but we have yeah. up, up, and a lot of neutral. Kind of ones flailing, flailing feathers. One sideways. Haven't seen it. <laughs> sideways um, one. <laughs> sideways one. We got sideways ones up. We don't have, have any downs though do we no, no downs. Downs. Really is. we have no down a down no downs no downs so we again i i would say it's certainly worth watching if you like witchy movies and you like yes. arthurian tales i will watch it again i will watch it again so that i can go back through and well for one i have to finish it and then also <laughs> i do want to go back through and, and and pick out all of the occult things <laughs> yeah yes it is definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. And even with my, you know, ho-hum uh, response to it, um, I definitely think it's worth watching. So I also think that you definitely need to be prepared before you bite off a movie like this. Like if it's not normally your cup of tea to watch something that out, like it's not that out there, but it's weird. And if if you're not normally someone who likes a movie that you really have to think on while you're watching it, it's probably going to feel real slow for no reason and it's a movie too where you can't be distracted you really have yeah. to turn off the lights make sure your phone is far away and and just sort of dive into the weirdness of it yeah yeah so thumbs up thumbs sideways no thumbs down but if you like what we're talking about check it out so for amanda who watches our it's show it's one of those movies i was really glad i saw in a theater mm. i would That's like a good point jason i would have liked to see it in the theater yeah yeah, I it was not good on my telephone under the covers. In the <laughs> so I moved on to my medium big screen TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Amanda said she watches our show to get movie recommendations. So I'm assuming that means witchy movie recommendations. We haven't ever really done that yet. Like if we want to do our like our top couple, I know we haven't planned this out, and we but we're good at off the cuff. Um, if everybody wants to say their top two or three witchy movie recommendations for Amanda. Ooh. And then oh, it's something that we can talk about it as, or, or something anybody wants anything that we talk about next on the show. Anybody? Um, yeah, I you can go. Okay. I think um, I have different witch movie tastes depending on what mood I'm in. But if I want like that feel good, homey, you know, boost my spirits witchy movie i love practical magic for that um but if i want to feel like i just dug my hands in the dirt and like rolled around in the woods naked uh, under the full moon then i watched the witch perfect and black oh speaking of i'm so <laughs> sorry did anyone see the brown <laughs> philip in the beginning of the green knight yeah several of them yes he was the fighting with the goose yeah the first thing i did was scream i was like brown philip <laughs> We're waiting for the purple Philip, though. We're waiting for the purple Philip. I don't know. Actually, your two choices, along with Wizard of Oz, would be mine, too. Practical Magic for that, the fun whatever, the witch for that, and then, of course, the classic uh, Wizard of Oz. So, yeah, I can't get too creative. Somebody get creative beyond that. I have to tell you, it's going to come to no surprise my favorite witch movie that I watch over and over and over a thousand times is The Addams Family, both 91 and 93. <laughs> Those are so, my two witch movies. So I'm going to throw out some weird ones. My first one is a documentary from 1970 called Legend of the Witches that features Maxine and Alex Sanders. If you want to know what the occult world looked like 
50 some years ago god god i feel really old right now if there's a dvd version of this just released recently with a lot of features and it's really cool and what's the name of it again? You're kind of frozen in and out. So you guys, it's not you. It's Jason. And so song. we don't think of it as a witch movie. Legend of the Witches from 1970. And it's a it's a documentary that has Alex and Maxine Sanders, who at the time in England were the world's most famous witches. And it's really worth checking out. And there was a new release on DVD slash blue last two or three years because it had been out of print for a while. And then my other weird choice is The Doors in The Doors movie because uh, Patricia Keneally, who was a practicing witch, was a girlfriend of Jim Morrison, and they had a hand fasting ceremony, and it shows the hand fasting ceremony, and it looks like witchcraft. And then the whole movie is sort of written with these overtones of Jim is a Native American shaman, which hasn't aged particularly well, but also that Jim is Dionysus, and there are some scenes where you like see Jim's head flash and then you see Dionysus's head in there and stuff. And it's cool as shit. And I love that movie. And it's a trip. Uh, get yourself a, a glass of like a bottle of wine, not a glass and sit down and watch the doors. It's a great witch movie. I have to agree with you there. When I, and I've never watched it except for the hand fasting because I do hand fasting. I never thought of it witchy movie, but it totally is a witchy movie other than the hand fasting and her character. Wow. The, the doors are like such a like this could have this should have been my other suggestion for a movie tonight. Mm -hmm. It's totally I'll have to turn fifty one <laughs> and watch the show again on January, January fourth. But it's the doors. I think are like one of the best bands for ritual because it's so hypnotic and mm -hmm. so different. A lot of other bands don't. I, I to me they're like one of my five favorite sort of magic of all time uh, beautiful we're losing done a lot of rituals to the doors over the years we come back okay. yeah. <laughs> the weather is bad tonight i think it's i think it's hurting my connections i think it's bad everywhere have you spoken to us have we spoken on Suspira, 197, yeah. Have we yeah. spoken that? We've mentioned it, but have we, have we haven't talked about no, it yet. We should, we should, we should pick, that's Italian, we should pick that one. I think they just redid it. Um, we could do that for, for a uh, show because those were, those are really interesting, something very different than a lot of the movies that we do, which are mostly American. Um, but I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to throw out a couple films, um, which, you know, mostly the films we've done have been recent ones. Most of the ones you guys have listed, I would say are on definitely top 10 love the doors movie for tons of tons of reasons, not just it's witchy, uh, aspect because the doors are amazing. Um, but, uh, I am going to throw out two films from the golden era, which are classic Hollywood, which films, which are um, Bell Book and Candle and, um, and uh, I Married a Witch. And I'm throwing those out because those are two of the early most classic um, witch films that we have that we haven't spoken about here. And if you want to see old Hollywood doing the witch thing, it's very different. And I love Golden Era Ho Hollywood films particularly and all everything about Golden Era Hollywood not everything about Golden or Hollywood, but but uh, the movies are fantastic, and so those those two yeah. are classic. If you want to look back in history a little bit, see see how they were doing it in the fifties and the forties, um, and, and they're sort of precursors narratively to um, Bewitched, which comes out a decade after that. So those are the two. Of course, you know, The Wizard of Oz is always my favorite. If anybody asks what's my favorite witch movie, I always say Wizard of Oz, like you, Patty, and um, and but I think really. Uh, when you said, can you list a bunch of weird films? I could probably list a lot of weird films because of my book. So if you really need recommendations, <laughs> I have, if you look, this is the greatest part. You're saying, where, what movie should you choose? I don't know. I, in the back of every chapter, every decade, I have a list. And you could literally just watch each one. And whenever anybody gets my book and they're like, oh, this is great. I think don't just read the book sitting in your bed read a section 
watch all the movies because it's so much fun to watch all them and they're all in here now things like Suspiria are not in here because it's not American um, and I only did American films so we definitely should touch on some some of the British some of the Italian because um, there's some really great ones out there German Hexen we can we can talk about Hexen the old the old famous <gasps> yes, one yes Hexen <laughs> that one is very special and very different so that's another one to watch Death Becomes Her was fun Yes. I There's actually, a lot of I love I, Death Becomes Her. I, I am so Death obsessed Becomes. with Death Becomes Her. But mostly I know this is off topic. Death Becomes Her is one of my favorites because it is a direct response to Janacek's 1927 opera, the uh, what is it, the Marcropolis Affair, which mm -hmm. tells a story about a woman 300 years ago who was given this potion who made her live and then she's lived and she changes her name but always has the same initials. And then a hundred years later, she's changed her name. And a hundred years later, she has to retake the potion. And she goes, this is horrible. Mm -hmm. I hate this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, lo I love, I love death becomes her. It's not really a witch movie, but it is about potions. So yes, I, I love it has an element. It has. Yeah. an element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was this. And the secrets of Ronin is someone said too, is a great movie. I haven't seen it in years, but I remember loving it. That was a really, really great film um, with Irish lore. So that's that's good. Selkies and stuff. Um, another great one. Our producer says The Nine Gates. That's a really good one. I really did. I enjoyed that one. The Ninth Gate, I think, was mm -hmm. with Depp, right? I think that one was with Depp. I like that one a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and more recently, um, I see someone says the Love Witch. Um, the Love Witch was is two thousand sixteen. Um, that's a, that's a really interesting indie film to watch. Um, there are and the, and who said it? They said from the seventies. She captures a seventies feel, and there are a lot of great seventies witch films. But those are great. Oh, well, how could we not even if we're listing great witch films to watch? How could we not say? Um, um, <laughs> Rosemary's Baby. Um, you're talking oh. about 70. I mean, that the original Rosemary's Baby, not the one in the 2000s, is absolutely well, I, there was, I but we don't talk that. about it. No, like people tell me that, there was a fourth Indiana Jones movie. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the uh, Rosemary's Baby and Carrie are them. two of the most brilliant, <laughs> brilliantly made witch films of the 1970s or 68. We're counting that 70s, whatever that period of time. So those are another two. But Absolutely. Hands down. Hands I, down. Rosemary's Baby. Actually, that's one of my favorites. And I quote that one all the time. You really? I've never seen it. Ale Satan. <gasps> Guy is not his father. <laughs> Correct yourself, Courtney. Correct yourself. That's funny. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume we'll be watching it soon, and you have and talking about it. Seen the original Wicker Man, though, right, Courtney? Nope. Oh, that, was that the wait, wait, wait? Isn't that the is that is the Nick Cage? Nick Cage was no. in that one, right? Oh. What, no, 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 no. <gasps> that is that the original one was 1971. And it's a British film. But is Nick Cage in a movie called The Wicker Man? Um, what am no, I remembering? He is no. not. There's there are people who think that he was in a movie called The Wicker Man. <laughs> but he really was in a movie called The Wicker Man. It's not in that okay. plane with the fourth Indiana Jones movie. These yeah, things yeah. don't exist. Got it. So I did not see that one then. The beast, the not the beast. No, it's no, it doesn't exist. And I did not hate that one because it doesn't exist, but I right. didn't yeah. hate it because I didn't watch it. In the, the Jason <laughs> universe, the Jason right. universe. Right. I, tonight, I create my own world. <laughs> <laughs> These things do not exist in my world. Uh, Can I throw uh, out uh, maybe a controversial, yeah. I know it's not movies, but like a TV? Yeah. Maybe controversial take. As someone who grew up on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I live for the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Mm -hmm. I love the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and I hate Sabrina the Teenage Witch. What? Why is that controversial? Everyone I talk to thinks I'm crazy because I yeah. grew up with Sabrina, like the original. I Sabrina. think th I think the new take is brilliantly done. Brilliantly done. 
Way better than Way better than Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the TV show from the 90s, had its point. It, it, it was a point in time. It lived in a space that it was meant to be lived in. It was, it was, and I talk about that in my book. It is very much placed there. Is it is it groundbreaking in and of itself? No, absolutely not. Sabrina, the, uh, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina breaks boundaries. And that's that's the difference. It's a way better f- a show um, just in, in what it's doing and how it's filmed. Um, the other one was a sitcom. But I yeah. love Sabrina. I love her history. And I would love to do a, a whole show on Sabrina. We could talk Sabrina, the teenage witch from the 60s, 70s, all the way to today. Um, she is fantastic. Michelle. All her incarnations. <laughs> okay, I'm just reading from somebody from John Stark said the Wicker Man was a point of reference with John Voight. I don't know which Wicker Man. A point of reference. John Voight. I like to was, remember was he that in the was Nick- only one. <laughs> I don't he was one. not in the original 1971 the the only excuse me Jason the only one he was not in that one <laughs> not in the one that didn't exist that other people yeah. <laughs> there's there's one Christopher Lee and that is the only one Britt Eklund Christopher Lee that's it that's the cool. only Christopher one Christopher Lee yeah music by Magnet that's it's a yeah, great I didn't it? say that one it's the only one that exists Core. <laughs> We listed um, some good films. Yes. You know. So we would love you guys' input. We always say this, and no one ever gives us input. But <laughs> if you want us to talk about, we really do, like specific films. And we're moving into TV shows. And we even said we, you know, on occasion we'll move into fun books and plays. I will say, I will say too, that if um, when it comes to sort of TV shows, it's not really witches per se, but it feels like witches. If you haven't watched The Sandman on Netflix, you need to watch The Sandman on Netflix, which... Really? I don't know The Sandman. (gasps) (laughs) Tell us about The Sandman, Heather. (laughs) Well, I really can't because I I only watched, gave it four episodes and then I was like, I'm done. The best show of 2020. The gods have cut him out, Heather. Holy birthday, the gods have cut him out. <laughs> I, you know, I'm dick. I, I like oh. Neil Gaiman. Um, I love that, but I just Ooh. couldn't get into it. I just felt like it was, it was like overdone. Like I'm like, I'm not even getting into this story. I don't know what the heck. It was just. I love that Jason is having a bigger meltdown Ari, on his internet. We are done. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Richard Layla looks like you and I are in the same <laughs> ship tonight. <laughs> we, are, we are in a ship together. We are definitely. We are. We're not afraid to be contrary. <laughs> she didn't like. <laughs> He's dead to me. So Jason She's... broke up with Richard Lyle last week. He's breaking up with you, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my it, tissues? Hold on. It, it, it is, it's just painful. It's just painful. I'm sorry. Uh, and on your birthday, yeah. too. I yeah. want to bring up a, another film. Maybe, Jason, maybe you will love this one. Maybe we can reconcile. Another witch <laughs> film that I really, 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 really love is Race with the Devil, 1975, with Loretta Swit. Are you familiar with this one? No. It's so bad and great at the same time. So Loretta Swit and these other people, they go on this dream vacation in this RV, and they end up out in the middle of nowhere, and the satanic witches sort of stalk them and then get them redirected, and they come back around and... You, and you basically have set the place on fire. Their, their dream RV is on fire at the end of the, of the film. It's so bad. I love it. Race with the Devil, 1975. I am, I'm, watching, I'm watching that one. 
It's so bad. <laughs> That's the best kind. <laughs> all of the witch movies, Richard Lale, every, all of the witch movies from the 70s, with the exception of the two he said, are so bad. <laughs> but that's what makes them worth watching. It's true. I'm watching. Maybe, Jason, I'm- maybe if you watch that one, maybe you maybe you'll agree with me. Maybe we can break you could we can all make up if you enjoy Race with the Devil 1975. He's still he's still and beside himself at this point. <laughs> Jason is now remaining frozen. I, I, there, I the last. <laughs> he's still. I was it. bored. Oh, fantasy for fantasy's sake! I'm sorry. As and Tabitha I like Neil said, Gaiman, so Wendell I was Christie, surprised. Go back, watch the last. Oh. So- Okay, I'm watching the last something. Ender <laughs> Sandman episode of the season. It's not, not, it's not connected. I love that. Song. I love that one person commented that the, there it is. The bacon freezing added to the interest. Of the, <laughs> makes the show. I, I like that poster. That was amazing. That's so on point. Thank you for that. We have great producers. Look at that. So that is so seventies. <laughs> It's oh my god! Amazing. And you you first have to watch the trailer because it talks about this th- these two couples going on their dream vacation in some crappy camper yeah. with fake wood paneling and a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have to talk about that one. That means we have to find it. Ah. Yeah. Well, we can we can do a list. I could give you up a, a list of those um, those type of films, and we can do a, a whole show on the really cheesy, terrible te- witch films from the early nineteen seventies. <laughs> Heather, you are speaking my language. The worse oh. it is, and the cheesier yeah. it is, the more I love it. Yep, uh, witch exploitation is what I call it, and I, uh, our <laughs> producer just put that up. But that's the term I think I use in my book, or I use in which is it is was witch exploitation exactly. <laughs> We will do uh, it. We will. We will do that. Yeah. FYI, for anyone interested, you can rent it for or buy it for three ninety nine on Amazon Prime. Uh-huh. Sounds like we're getting ripped off. <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's That's- worth it. It's worth it. It, it is feels. So- it feels like a movie. <laughs> okay. Here's another one. Blood Orgy of the She Devils. The same period of time. You should all watch it the same time I, on live tweet. It really La- oh, the yeah. title alone, Heather. The title alone. I'm I'm on board. Say that yeah, one more time. Too. I don't know. Blood I, I, Orgy of the She Devils. Ooh. I'm in. Another one. Blood Sabbath. I mean, I there there's a string of them, and they're all the same type of thing, you know, and it's they're just terrible movies. But you oh, just can't look away. The movie <laughs> poster for this one is the best thing I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Which um, one is that? The Blood Orgy of the Sheet Devils. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. Oh, I'm, I'm sure our producer is rapidly looking for it. Well, um, as we are getting close to the end, we do want to wish everybody, besides Jason's birthday, it's our first show of 2023. Woo! Hey, the Witches Movie Coven made it into a new year. And we want to thank everybody listening for listening and watching and telling your friends about it. Now, we've had a little problem with Facebook. I don't know if we want to talk about it now, but Facebook doesn't like us very well. So you may not find us a lot on Facebook, but you'll always, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got bats, we got vampires. The duck. That's good. <laughs> okay. it's good. So back to, if, you so on, if you don't find us on Facebook, we've been sent to our room. Yes. Over again. So, but you will always find us on YouTube. And so mm-hmm. far, I can, we could post nicely things to remind you to go to YouTube. But, yeah. um, you know, sign up for whatever you can sign up for to know that we are here. We all have newsletters. We all have stuff. So let's keep going with 2023. So in a couple minutes that we have left, if anybody has anything that they want to say where you can find them, what you have going on, all these authors, any book signings, any TV shows, let's start with Heather. 
Okay. Um, let's see. I, I will eventually be posting um, where I'm going to be. I'll be doing some live stuff, some attending some conferences come spring, but um, for the next couple of months, I'm still, I'm in the Atlanta Metro area um, doing my witchy stuff here um, as a working with authors. Cause I am an acquisitions editor at Llewellyn and um, working on some articles as a journalist. If you want to read any of the articles I write, which are usually about witches and occult and, uh, tarot readers and whatnot, you can go to my website. They're all there, um, uh, heathergreen.net. Um, and I'm on the socials, various ones. Um, all the links are there. Um, and I'm usually heathergreen01 in most of them. So you can find me Instagram, Twitter, and, and follow me. And I will be posting our YouTube when it comes out and also adding some stuff, more stuff to my website so you can see what I'm up to. Please reach out and uh, let's talk movies. Please do. Uh, Courtney. That's me. Um, you can find me watching Blood Orgy of the She Devils, <laughs> I think, um, or uh, on all the socials. That <laughs> yes. You're blocked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I play horror video games uh, and murder video games on Twitch at the Themes, and you can play along or scare me with sound alerts um you can find me on instagram or you can find black philip and my new and very much requested not a doll that we talked Aww. about before um it's a doll i really no i really messed up my own self with this because i should never have put it on <laughs> the screen because <laughs> inundated with messages about the doll um or facebook Aww. or whatever i'm i also i also stream this on youtube so if you ever have any trouble finding it at the themes on YouTube. And of course you can find me as Ghostbait on Scared and Alone at scaredandalone.com. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Jason. I'm Jason. First of all, thank you all for the birthday witches. Wish, witches. Witches. witches <laughs> this, is, this has been really fun. This is like the, I, oh my God, I'm so happy because um, I love you all so much. <laughs> oh no. Much. Oh. Um, I'm on, I'm the, this is, in another week. Uh, yeah. And I'll be at Convocation <laughs> in Detroit right now, the world's largest pagan festival in at the end of February. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. about that. And New Orleans next weekend, if you live there, because I'm celebrating my effing birthday for the next Yay! 10 days. Yeah. Yay. Well, happy birthday. All right. Happy and birthday. Richard Lale. I am Richard Leo Lillard. Uh, you can find me anywhere at thegentlemanpsychic.com. You can find me at Richard Leo Lillard. There's only one way of spelling it. There may be fakes out there. I'll never contact you for a reading. You have to do all the work. I just listen. Um, anyway, so you can find me everywhere. I've, I've got a few things coming up early, late, or late in the spring, too. But I can't go into that yet. But uh, I've got some things coming up. And just look for me. I'll post it. I'll, I'll keep you all posted on, on my Facebook since... I still have one, Christine Roth. I still have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. And, well, I'm Patty Negri. Um, you can find me at pattynegri.com. All the socials. And, and, and like Richard Lael, the, those of us who do readings and stuff, there's fake me's. I will not contact you or think you need a reading or tell you I've been thinking about you and I'm going to give you a special. No. Um, I do not, but patty.negri on Instagram. Actually, I'm kind of verified everywhere now, finally, but that doesn't stop the fakes. I thought it would, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so you could get to the real run from pattynegri.com. So join us every Wednesday. And on every Monday, I still have The Witching Hour, my podcast where you see fabulous guests like everybody right here. Um, the Witching Hour. I have wonderful guests and authors and witcher people, witchy people and magical people, and it drops every Monday on YouTube and video and on Paraflix and everywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, everywhere you get your podcasts. Um, now, somebody did just mention before we go there, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, in the Caribbean cruise for the Dark Waters cruise. I'm gonna be at Mass Parrot. All this stuff coming up. So for each of us, find us on our our websites and sign up whatever newsletters we have because it's just too much to tell you here and we want to see you live and video but somebody said we were supposed to talk about we were supposed to talk about something else and we forgot dr strange <laughs> which we'll get to we'll get to it in mm -hmm. the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks it's not going away this I is all my fault it. so this is my fault this is 
like my stupid episode and it went off the rails. Uh, mostly because Heather's terrible and doesn't give a bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm not I, feeling I, bad. I, I hope we never have a show that doesn't go off I mean, the rails. <laughs> I know. Isn't that kind of our thing? That's our thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in our mass seconds we have left, besides uh, showing our Black Phillips and showing what we do, we have one more thing to do. And we hope all you people out there, because I'm trying to think of fun things like one day we're going to do a live thing where people can join us and we do movies together. I don't know, East Coast, West Coast, in the middle somewhere. But I think we're also going to have to have a cackle contest. <laughs> so I'm going to that. cough every time. Oh, well. Don't cough this time. So on that note, everybody on the count of three, give us your best witches cackle. One, two, three. (laughs) 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 Thanks for watching the Witches Movie Coven.